Hi everyone, welcome to Python Crash Course. In a previous lecture, we had seen how you can install Anaconda and Python in your computer. Now we are gonna get started with the Python Crash Course for your machine learning lectures. Alright, so you need to search here Anaconda. Then uh, you will get this particular match there. You need to open this into administrator mode. So run Anaconda into administrator mode. Uh, this one is the default location for my Anaconda. And I'm going to make here a new folder inside my desktop. So that is the ML here. Uh, all of our algorithm and Jupyter notebook we will be storing inside this particular folder. So you need to click on this ML folder then get the address of uh, ML folder. I'm just going to copy this and then I need to change the directory and uh, let's zoom it a little so that you can see it properly. I'm going to just change this directory to desktop ML. Once you are inside the desktop ML, there you need to start the Jupyter notebook. All right. Every time whenever you close your Jupyter notebook, you need to start your Jupyter notebook with this method with this method like I had shown you here. All right, it will automatically open in a new browser. If this doesn't open, then you can click any of these link to open your Jupyter in your browser. Automatically, it will open in a default browser. Currently, we don't have any file inside this ML inside this ML folder. That is why notebook list is empty here. We need to make here a new notebook. So you need to click on new Python 3 IP kernel. Then it's going to make here a new notebook. Then we are going to rename this new notebook where we can say that this one as the Python crash course. So this one Python crash course is going to be for our data science course there. Thereafter, you can insert a new cell here above of this and then you can convert this cell into a markdown by pressing M in your keyboard. All right. So there this has become a markdown there. I'm going to say that here as the Python crash course. All right. Thereafter, you can hit here shift and the enter. Then I'm just going to insert here a new cell by clicking a there otherwise you can insert from here then i'm just going to highlight this particular cell there and then again i'm going to press here m in my uh, keyboard otherwise you know here you can convert your cell type to markdown by pressing m to code by pressing r and raw nb convert by pressing r there in your keyboard so by pressing M, I converted this into a markdown. Then I'm just going to type here as the as the uh, Python arithmetics operations. All right. So there are there are many Python arithmetic operations like uh, we have addition, subtractions, multiplications division uh, modulus exponentials and the flow division let's go ahead and see all those one by one for that we need to add here few cell just you need to uh, click outside of here cell and either you can press a or b a means we are gonna add here a new cell above of this cell all right something like this so many cells are getting added there all right Perfect. So thereafter, we are going to see how you can do the addition of the two numbers in the Python. You can simply press like one plus one and then you run this cell. That is the two. All right. So similarly, you can add any numbers here. These are the addition. Similarly, you can do the subtraction like five minus one. This is going to show here a four or you one minus five. This is going to show here a minus four there all right similarly you can do multiplication here something like four into four that is the 16 or you can say four multiplied by seven that is the 
28 you can multiply any numbers here not just the you know the smaller numbers and other than the multiplications we have the divisions you can divide any two numbers something like let's say 3 divided by 2 and then you can do like 4 divided by 6 and you can uh, divide any larger numbers or whatever numbers you want to divide you can divide any numbers even you can divide a float number something like this all right other than the division we have also here a modulus operations the modulus is something where you want to get the remainder of the numbers for example if i ask you to get the remainder of the 32 divided by 6 then how would you get that if you divide it by 6 you will be getting the numbers into the floating points there but i want here the remainders all right that's mean this particular i don't want this particular part i want 5 all right so that 5 will not be displayed here i want what you were left after 5 all right that means the 30 if we divide if we divide 30 by 6 then we get the 5 and additional 2 is the remainder there so that we can get if we put there a percent sign there that's the modulus sign there that is the 2 any numbers you can do something like this all right for this we have there a 6 there all right that's when if we if we subtract 6 into this we get this particular number all right and then we can divide by 13 we will be getting here a perfect number there that's the integer but you see there the still you are getting here a floating numbers there whenever you divide any number in a python that automatically get converted into a floating point even though you divide here integer numbers as well this will get converted into a floating points there something like this all right any number if you divide that will automatically get converted into floating point numbers but suppose that if you want this number represented as the integer then how would you do that there is the another arithmetic operations which which is known as the floor division so for floor division you need to put there two double slash two forward slash actually something like this 20 two forward slash by four that's the floor division all right there you get or you can uh, do like uh, you know the anything like 6 divided by 4 so that's the 1.5 but we don't want this as the float point we want the floor division so if you need to put there 2 forward slash then you will be getting there the 1 because it was 1 point something so that point got there truncated and then you will be just getting the floor division there all right other than that we have uh, uh, sorry other than that the, we have also the exponential or you can say the power or uh, power of some numbers calculation you can do that in the python as well something like if you remember you know if you remember a standard uh, uh, arithmetic operations you do something like this the 2 power of 2 but this is not the power in the python this is the xor operation so for power you need to put there 2 star there so something like that this is the 2 power 2 that's the 4 if you say here 2 power 3 that is the 8 and the 3 power 3 that is the 27 you can do any numbers you can calculate the power of any numbers it's quite large number actually here that's how do, do you know here one thing do you uh, notice the difference there while we were doing the division we were getting the floating point numbers but we when we are calculating the power we are getting here the integer numbers only all right perfect so this is all about in this lecture thanks for watching this in the next lecture we will see the data types in the python hi everyone welcome to this brand new lecture in previous lecture we had seen python arithmetic operations in this lecture we are going to see the python data types these data types are available in the python as a native data types like the text data type which is also known as the string numerical types like integer float and the complex numbers a sequence type like list tuple and the range 
the map type like list, set type like set and the frozen set, boolean type that's the boolean where you will be getting the final result as the true or false, a binary types like the bytes, bytes array and the memory view and then you have the finally the none type. Let's go ahead and see all of these the data types one by one and then you see how you can assign a variable for these data types and how you can get the type of the data. For example, if you already have some number or any type of the data, you want to get the type of that data, you can simply type their type and then you can put your data inside that. Then it says that this is the integer type. At the same time, if you put there the point zero, you will be getting here a float data type. Suppose that if you put here some string numbers, something like that, you will be getting here str, that's the string data type here. You can also give the name of the variable there, something like this, or the value of the variable in fact. Otherwise, you can also assign this into a new variable. Suppose that here, I'm gonna say here, uh, string text is equal to this is string this is the variable I assigned this value in a variable named as string text let's go ahead and get the type of string text variable there I get here string text where this is str the similarly you can assign the variable to any other numbers as well uh, I mean to say that these numbers to any other variables as well and then you can get the type of the variable something like this or you can say something like uh, this where you get the float or any other type of the data types. Let's go ahead and see how you can get the complex data type. The, to get the complex data type you need to put there j as the post fix after the number so suppose that I put here one J that becomes a complex. You might have heard some numbers, something like uh, one plus one J that becomes the complex number. So this one is the real part of this complex number. And this one is the imaginary part of the complex number there. The similarly, you can get the type of the list there as well. We have not read the list as, as of now, but for time being, you know whenever these array are defined inside a square bracket then those are a list there all right when these are defined into a round bracket then then these becomes there then these becomes there a tuple suppose that something like this and when these are defined into a curly braces then those becomes as a set so we will read, uh, we will discuss about list, tuple and dictionary, all these in the coming lectures. For time being, you just know that these are the types which we can know there. The similarly, we can get the type of the none as well. That's the none type there. Other than that, you can get the Boolean type like uh, we have seen some of these and similarly, you can set the byte as well. So something like that. In a boolean, we have a true and false number. So if you get their type of these true and the false, you will be getting there a boolean type. Similarly, you can get the byte array or a byte type as well. Suppose that a string is defined with, with the prefix of the B, then that becomes as the byte, something like this, let's say. Then this becomes as the bytes, all right? So whatever the string we have here internally, now that becomes byte. If we remove that B, then it becomes their string. All right. Similarly, we can say that the bytes array as well. Suppose that you define their, uh, you define their a number, something like that, bytes array. And inside that, you give their something like this. Just a second, somewhere I missed that. This is the byte array. All right. So what happens whenever you convert any numbers uh, or, you know, any numbers or value into a byte array, then that becomes there. Then that becomes into hexadecimal value. One thing you should know here that 
it takes their string value there so this string value got converted into a bytes array there all right so this bytes array defines their integer number 3 there all right you can convert other numbers as well here something like that now you see there the 5 that's mean 1 2 3 4 and the 5 if you define there 1 then it becomes there just 1 so something like that it is defining there and if you get the type of this bytes array you will be getting there the type of this as the byte array all right perfect so this is all about in this lecture in the next lecture we will see few more features of the python all right i'll see you then hi everyone welcome to this lecture there are times when you specify a variable into an integer and then you needed to convert that into a float later on or similarly you define a variable into a string but you needed to convert that into a float or integer so the process of doing these is known as a variable casting in a python so we have three type of the casting which python supports one is the integer and then we have a float and then str for example suppose that you define a variable a equal to 5 and then of course the value of this variable a is 5 there and type of this variable a is integer there but suppose that you want to convert this into a floating point numbers then how would you do that either you can do like something this and then you can say that the type of a would be float but this is the process of like reassigning a variable with the same value again by putting this point but suppose that you don't have that liberty to redefine the variable with the new value so we need to reutilize these variables from here to here suppose that now i assign these variable into uh, these values into b variable then i do here a float of a so the float of a becomes there a float number and the type of b which is a float will be a float there for example if you print there a b you will see there the value of this variable b is now 5.0 that means this is a float number similarly if you have any variable which is already in a float if you want to convert that into the integer then you can simply cast that variable by using int there so you can put there int b now you see there int b has become there a 5 all right perfect now suppose that you want to convert these float or integer number into a string then how would you do that it is very much simple you can simply do here str a then that becomes as the string here uh, i think we assigned a earlier as the float let's go ahead and assign that a as integer all right so now this a was the integer but by putting by casting it with the string it becomes their string similarly you can also cast a float value into a string as well like strb it becomes their 5.0 there now this becomes as their string value here str do remember this string 5.0 is definitely not equal to 5.0 because the type of these variables are different whenever you need to whenever you need to combine two variables together uh, whenever you need to compare two variables together the type of the data should be same there suppose that now you have a string data all right let's say the c is equal to str of a now this is this we have a string data and now i ask you to convert this string into integer then how do you do that you can simply do that like int c it becomes here integer and similarly you can do here a float c it becomes a float but you know the concept is here suppose that if i ask you to convert this b 
which is a float first convert this b into a string all right now it has become here a string 5.0 now if i ask you to convert this string into the integer then how would you do that you know the simplest way to do that something like that int d but you know this is showing the error the reason is when we are evaluating this string here all right this is a float and the float string cannot be converted directly to the integer so how would you do that so each type of the string data you need to first convert into a float and then you can convert back to the integer so it should be something like that first float 5.0 and thereafter you can do the integer of this float so the conversion of a float number which is already a string to an integer is a two step process where you need to first get the floating point number and thereafter you need to get the integer number out of that floating point all right perfect so this is all about in this lecture in the next lecture we will evaluate the string data type in details all right i'll see you then hi everyone welcome to this new lecture let's see how python string works how you can define a python strings and what are the operations you can do on a string in a python strings in the python is actually surrounded by either one or a two quotation marks for example let's say if i write it here something like this that's the single quotation marks there otherwise you can also define it with the two quote there all right and however when this gets printed here you will see there just one uh, quote there all right perfect you can also print this string by using here a print if you are using normal python uh, file other than the jupyter notebook then you need to use the print to print these values there so there you can type something like this now you see when you use their print then these quotes are not printed there that's the difference between when you run uh, these values and these gets printed into a cell without a print then it includes here a single quote otherwise it don't include you can assign these strings to any variable as well something like this let's say and then you can print this variable or you can just simply write it and run a cell it will print this variable there all right so but but suppose that if you want to print a multi line string then how would you do that for example let's say i say here let's suppose that you want to print all right multi line string all right perfect so this is string as we know that a string is surrounded by double quote or a single quote but what happens when we have our string which is actually running in a multiple line then what happens let's go ahead and run this and then see what happens it says that there is the error all right because we break down this string into a multiple line and then surrounding it with the single or double quote doesn't work all right but if we keep it into a single line then it will work there so to sort it out what you can do you can here put it a three double quote there all right so a string surrounded by three double or single quote that can be used as a multi line string all right let's go ahead and run this you can break it out here you see so as soon as we hit the enter here now you see there a new line is inserted there at this particular place there all right now this is the multi line string the difference is here if you print this string now you will see there it will print in the same way like we defined this string as a multi line string because this new line got printed as the new line that's when this string got you know uh, broken from this particular uh, uh, new line from there all right perfect
the similarly you can use there a single quote as well suppose that you have like this sorry uh, triple single quote you need to use there all right that's the triple single quote you can use there to print this and the similarly uh, you can use here uh, print to print this string now the another thing might happen with you suppose that when you have a string which have a single quote in the string itself suppose that it has a equal to and you you are trying to create a multi-line string where i say let's all right then see what happens you know if you print this you know you 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 got this right so what happens there although we used there a single quote to surround uh, the three times single quote to surround a string and inside we use the single quote now this quote is preserved here all right but suppose that if you use here just a single quote to define your string something like this you know that's the error all right so if you have apostrophe there or a single quote inside your string then you should surround your string with the double quote there something like that all right perfect let's go ahead and see how you can define the arrays in the string or string array all right so let's say here you have this kgp talky youtube channel and site kgp talky.com all right this is the a and that's the string here so you know what happens whenever you define a variable as a string in the python that variable value is a string itself and individual character is actually made of the array of a string so in python we don't have any data types as the character like we have in c or any other languages but in python each of these characters itself is treated as the string itself all right so whenever you want to access any of these characters you can access those by the position of the string or by using the indexing methods that means if you do here a0 that's when the first character will get printed let's say if you want to print here 10th character then you need to put there the index number 10 uh, index 10 means 11th character actually if you want to print here the last character then you can put there the minus m there all right so the minus m is the sorry minus one that's the m here all right that's how now you check the type of let's go ahead and check the type of this so now if you check the type of this is the string itself so what's the problem here i mean what's the trick here the trick is here now you see the type of a is a string itself and the type of any character is its string itself since in the python there is no character data type so all of these characters are defined as the string itself so you can say that a string is made of a strings array itself that's mean a string this string is also an array of a string uh, this seems a little confusing but yes that's the true right so this string is itself an array of a string all right the similarly you can also uh, find out the length of any string so the length of a string says that the character the total number of characters present in the string including spaces here all right for example if you say something like this one space you will get the one character there two space three space four space so you get there the length of this string is a four because these are just the empty spaces there so all these spaces are also included while calculating the length of the string all right let's go ahead and uh, combine two strings together so let's say you have here a equal to 
string 1 and then you have a b equal to string 2. If you want to combine these two strings together, you can simply do here a plus b. You will see there string 1 and 2 will be combined together. But do you notice here there is no space between 1 and s here. That means as soon as this string 1 ends, string 2 is started from there. So to include these spaces, what you can do, you can add there. You can add here in between additional space, something like that. So string 1, string 2, otherwise you can say something like that, string 1 and string 2. All right. This is all about in this lecture. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you next one. Hi everyone. Welcome to this new lecture. Let's go ahead and continue our Python string lecture. Previously we had seen how you can define a string and then how you can do concatenation of the strings there. All right. Let's go ahead and see how you can do the slicing of the strings. Suppose that you have a string named as the a string one. All right. Otherwise, let's say you are talking about something like this, a larger string. All right. And you want to get here uh, some part of this string. Then how would you do that? You can simply say here uh, string index like a0 that's the first character all right but what i said i said that the some part of this string or you can say a sub string if you want to get the sub string then how do you do that suppose that you want this one then how do you do that it is like you will start from length one to length two that's mean the start length and the end length so this one length will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so it will start from the 10 and then this is the 6, that means 16. So it will start from 10, now you see there the y and till 16. So you need to put here a colon and then 16. So you get there uh, 2, 17 perhaps. Alright, so what happens here? Why I put here 17? The reason is this 17 is not included in the list. For example, let's say if I say here 0 to 2, all right. So by default 0 to 2 means 0, 1. This goes like this 0, 1 and 2. But you know here what happens when you define something like this start and the end. So end index is not included while doing slicing in the string. That is why when we put 16, we didn't get E. Although the location of 17 is this space. All right. So when we put the 10 to 17, we get all the strings starting from 10 to just before 17. That's mean this one. All right. So while printing in the string, only these things are included, not this one. Okay. This one is not included. That's why you are getting just kg here. All right. Perfect. Let's go ahead and see how do you do the slicing from the start and slicing from the end. Suppose that I ask you to get, get the string or sub string starting from the character 0 to 30. One way to do this something like, uh, sorry, this would be into a square bracket. One way to do this is like this. Alright, but keeping this 0 is not necessary. You can simply do something like this. So this one is slicing from the starting. You don't need to mention their 0. Uh, similarly, if I ask you to print last 10 character of the string, then how do you do that? It is something like that. A. Then you will do here, uh, which will start minus 10 to something like this. So it will take there a minus 10 to end that's mean last 10 character will be printed here let's go ahead and count it 4 and then 8 and then here 2 that's the 10 so last 10 character got printed in our string a there let's go ahead and see how the negative indexing works suppose that if i ask you to get the last fifth to second character all right that means I'm asking you to 
get the any character whatever characters are coming from the minus 10th position to minus 5th position that's mean you count from here till 10 and then you also count from till 5 and then you take only which are falling in between 5 and 10 from the back side all right so you need to define that something like this a all right there you need to tell here minus 10 that's mean this is a reverse indexing it will come to you know the 10th last character till fifth last character so it will be printed something like this this is printing from the last all right if you put here the minus one you see there this one is got printed uh, minus zero that's mean you will get nothing all right and if you don't put here anything you will get this all these last 10 character there hi everyone let's go ahead and see how you can modify a strings okay we are going to take again our uh, default string a which we stored kgp talky youtube channel and site kgptalky.com so to modify this string there are many methods first of all you need to know that what type of modification you want in this string suppose that you want to make this string into a upper case you can simply do something like this a dot upper and then this upper all these lower cases will get converted into upper case and everything is now into upper case suppose that and similarly you want to make this into a lower case then you can do like b dot lower a is already in lower case so no point to put a dot lower so in fact we want to put b into a lower case now this got converted into a lower case suppose that you want to also convert into a title case as well so you can do something like this a title case is something where a uh, first character will you know get converted into a capital letter and rest will be into a lower case similarly you can do for a string b as well so you see there the string a everything was in lower case and first character of all these st strings got converted into upper case and b b was into upper case all these characters in the b string was in upper case so other than the first character everything got converted into a lower case that's how you convert your string into upper case lower case and the title case now suppose that you want to remove the white spaces from your string for example uh, string defined as b equal to a string and then there is this space all right if you if you print this string you see there is the additional space in this string you what you can do you can simply do like b dot strip if you do like that so the strip will actually remove whatever the additional non-printing characters are there all those get removed for example let's say if you have here a new line there so even though this new line and these space everything got removed from there only you got your you know the actual string which will get printed at the final stage other than that you can simply replace uh, you know these spaces as well suppose that you have this a string and you want to replace all these white spaces to a double space then how would you do that you can simply do here a dot replace a single space so where, wherever it founds a single space it will replace that with two spaces now you see there that single space got replaced here with two space there uh, similarly you can replace it with the tab that's the tab separation and if you print this you will be seeing there all these strings will be replaced here with the tab there all right let's suppose that if you want to insert some numbers inside the list then how would you do that suppose that this one is your string and then you want to replace this particular and which is a string with a symbol then how do you do that this is this one you can do with like a dot replace and there you can type something 
like this now this gets replaced with the and although we don't want that space uh, sorry we want the their uh, space here so we need to put their uh, space all right other than that let's say if you want to have any numbers while concatenating two strings then how would you do that for example let's say i say my age is 30 year and the text data my age is like this all right so i have my text data which says that my age is and the age is my 30 so to do the concatenation with this number i can simply do here a plus but there is a problem the problem is i'm trying to add here a string with the integer so it will not work you need to convert this integer into a string so once this has become a string now you can concatenate two strings together so this text plus a string of the age has become my age is 30 so similarly there are other methods which you can use to format your string for example let's say if i say here text is equal to my age is you need to put here two curly braces there and then you need to do here a format and then you can put there the age so what happens whenever there is a curly braces inside a quote or a double quote single quote or double quote and then you put there a format so the first number replaced the first number will get replaced in whatever you, you have placed there the curly braces and if you put there two let's say if you put there two curly braces then the second number will also get then you need to provide here two parameters something like this all right so it is saying here my age is 30 then that means this age is being replaced here dot and then this age is being replaced here that is the 30 other than that you can also give any integer number here 30 dot 0 even you can give here some uh, some some string as well that's again 30.0 you can give here a float number as well so now you see this point and then dot this this dot and then dot 0 dot 0 will get replaced here so it becomes 30 dot 0 dot 0 all right perfect that's how you do the string formatting into the python so this is all about in this lecture thanks for watching this i'll see you next one hi everyone welcome to this brand new lecture in this lecture we are going to evaluate the boolean variables and uh, we will be seeing how you can compare multiple variables together and then based on the values of the boolean variable you can perform the operation so there are two type of the boolean variable it's the true and false so the true is logical one and false is a logical zero the true means something is like yes and the false is something like no or a zero value for example if i say one greater than two this is no because th this is false right but if i say one is greater than 0.2 then obviously this is correct so we get the value as the true we can also say that 10 equal to equal to 10 that's the true that is why we are getting here true but if we say here 10 equal to equal to 9 this is false so this boolean value we are getting as a false there you can check the type of this as well like 10 equal to equal to 10 so the type is boolean all right it doesn't matter whether it gives false or a true but the type will be always there a bool type all right you can also compare a uh, string as well together for example let's say if i say here age equal to equal to age of course these two strings are the same so we will be getting here a true but if i put here additional space then this will be evaluated as the false there all right and if we put here additional space and we say there 
age not equal to age with space then obviously we know that these two are not equal in string that is why it is a, it is a true let's say if you you want to evaluate 1 equal to equal to 1.0 then what happens you see there the float value and the integer value of these two variables are equal that is why this is giving us a true result here so what happens here although we are having two different data types while comparing these two values but still the result is true here but at the same time if you say here something like this one equal to equal to the string value of the one this is false because the string one is not equal to the integer one in no way similarly you can also check this with the float one there are other ways to evaluate the string and uh, with the boolean with the boolean variables so for example let's say i have a string data there like this is a kgp talky channel all right so in this if you want to find out a particular service string is found in a variable or not for example, let's say I want to find out the KGP talky in A. It is there. It is present there. That is why we are getting result as the true here. But we, but if we change it like KGP space talky, it is not present in the string. That is why we are getting there a false value. If we remove this KGP, we just check with the talky. Now we say there we 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 see there a talky is present inside this string that is why it is saying this is a true so that's how you can use your a boolean variable to compare two numbers or two data types or two variables together and in coming lectures we will be also seeing how you can take action based on the boolean value whether true or false which we will be covering in our conditional statement lecture. All right, I'll see you then. Hi everyone, let's get started with list in a Python. List can store a multiple items into a single variable. You can define a list which consists all data types defined in the Python, even the custom data types defined in the Python. List is made with the two square bracket. Then you can define something like this. You can put here a uh, string as well. You can put here a boolean variable as well. So this is the list. All right. If we copy this and paste it here and we provide it, we provide it into a new variable A. And if you get the type of this new variable A, you will see that the type of this variable is a list there. And the items in the list is the ordered items. That's when this list will never change no matter what you do or whatever the operations. I mean to say that whether you print it or you assign it multiple times, that's not going to change. That means the list is an ordered data type there. That's when the way you define these variables, I mean in the order, you define these variables, these variables will be always in this particular order. So whenever a data type is the ordered data type, then you can access the values of the data types with the index. That's mean a list allow a change in its, it, let's allow a change in its list itself. For example, if I want to replace this one with the 10 you can simply do it equal to 10 now if you print here a it becomes 10 to 3 4 and true all right so this one is a mutable that's mean whenever you can change any variable value then that variable is known as a mutable variable in coming lectures, we will see other type of the data type like set and the dictionary. There are, we will also talk about the mutable and immutable data types. Let's go ahead and get the length of this list. 
you can get the length of this list by just typing their length and you can also get the slicing you can perform any slicing operations in the list for example let's say you have a and you want to get the second element out of this list a you can simply put here a1 so 1 means second item a0 means first item 1 means second item there you get the second item and then you get here a third item but as soon as you go out of range then it says that the index error because 5 is not present it has only 0 1 2 3 and 4 so the 5 is not present that is why list index out of range error you are getting there you can add the items into the list or you can extend two list when you have a single list and you have another list you can combine those that is known as the extension of a list let's go ahead and see how you can add the item into a list suppose that you have these lists something like this there are many ways the first way to do that either you can do the append or you can add two strings together or you can do the extend so we are going to first see here append let's say i'm going to just do here append and in this append i'm going to add here a new variable as the zero all right now if you see here a a new value in this a variable got added there at the last index position so whenever you append a value that automatically gets added at the last position into a list there there is the another way to do this and that one is here a plus and then you need to define here another list and in that i'm going to just say here 11 now if you run this cell you will see there this list is added here at the last index of this a you can add here a multiple values as well so all these values will be added into a list sequentially at the last of this eighth index there all right now you see there all these got added there is the third way to do this the third way is the extension like you do here a dot extend here all right and in that you have here a list again 11 12 and 13 let's go ahead and run this now once you run this the a this extension happens inside this a itself all right now if you run here a you see there all these got added even though even though we added this earlier but this this didn't change a because whenever something is producing output that is not changing if you wanted a change from here we should have given it something like this so this a would have modified from here itself but this a was not modified earlier that was that was modified from here just to check that what you can do here we can just run it here uh, 14 uh, we can do here 14 15 and then 16 now you see this you will see there a 14 15 and the 16 earlier we saw there a was printed like this and now 14 15 16 just got added there at the last of the index you also have an option to remove the values from the list as well there are two ways to remove the value one is remove and another one is the pop so like let's say you have this list and out of this list you want to remove this four so you can simply do here a dot remove four all right uh, sorry now you see there if you print here a you will see this 4 is removed from A and if you try to remove any value which is not already present in the list it will throw the error that the value not found the error which we saw earlier something like let's say uh, if we want to remove this so it says that the value is not in the list there all right again we don't have this list so this error will you know keep coming there let's go ahead and try to remove the 0 and then see this zero will also get removed from here 
that's the one way to remove the another way to remove that you can do like a dot pop so the earlier we used the method where a value is known but suppose that you don't know the value only you know the index which you want to remove suppose that whatever the value present at the zeroth index you just want to remove this so simply you can do the a dot pop and the zero it will automatically remove this a now if you check here it will automatically remove this 10 value from the a if you check here a this 10 is removed so the difference you see there is the pop it removed the value at the index provided here and then it returns that value here in the output and this a is modified here by removing the value whatever the index we provide there you can also sort out the lists here the values uh, depending on the ascending and the descending order let's go ahead and try to sort these values in a list you can simply do here a dot sort and there you will see this has been sorted here so this, this sort happens like this is a boolean variable all right so the boolean value this is the true so it came here at the top i mean at the first position and then the rest of other things are the number and those those are coming after this true let's suppose that if you want to sort this into a reverse order you can simply do here a dot sort and then you can do here reverse equal to true now you will see there this a is sorted into a descending order so the value which was coming in the last in, in the last now it has started coming at the top that mean at the first position and so on all right perfect so this is all about in this lecture thanks for watching i'll see you next one hi everyone let's go ahead and get started with the tuples in a python tuples is similar to a list but there is just one difference tuple is immutable that's mean once you have created a tuple you cannot change a tuple and there are a few other things uh, where tuple is different but moreover it's like a list there so the tuple a can have a multiple type of the data together inside a single tuple for example let's say if i define a equal to inside a round bracket then it becomes here a tuple do you remember earlier we used square bracket that was the list now it's tuple there i say here apple then i say here a cherry and then i say there the banana all right so the a variable a is now tuple you can check the type of the variable a by typing their type a which is tuple there and uh, this tuple is also ordered item uh, tuple is also ordered data type like the list that means once you have created a tuple then the order of these order of these items will not change in the tuple like a list all right let's go ahead and see whether tuple allows duplicate or not and let's see whether we can change this tuple or not the one thing do you see there that a zero is apple there but suppose that if you want to change this a zero with something let's say the zero number it will throw the error because the tuple object does not support the assign item assignment that's mean this is immutable all right so you can only read the read the tuple but you cannot modify the tuple whenever you want to add there a new value in the tuple then you need to create this whole new tuple there all right from the beginning but suppose that you want to add there zero then you have to create this a whole new tuple you cannot append already existing tuple all right you can also get the length of the tuple something like that earlier we had the tuple which has the length of three there all right perfect you can create a mixed data type of uh, for the tuple as well for example let's say you can do like uh, we have a zero then 0 0.1 that's when we have an integer a float value and then we have here a string value and then finally we have here a boolean value and then we have here list as well all right something like this 
so you can create a tuple like this as well so the tuple can take any type of the data inside uh, you know the, the this tuple all right but suppose that there is a given condition where you have a very large tuple but you are asked to modify the tuple all right so one way to assign a new value to a variable as a tuple the another way you can do you can convert this tuple into a list and then you can modify the list and then again you you can convert it back to the tuple suppose that if i ask you to add here a number 10 11 and 12 in this tuple obviously we cannot add in this tuple but what we can do here we can do something like this b equal to list of a now this tuple got converted into list and then i can do here append in a previous lecture we had seen there were many methods to add the items into the list there all right so i'm just gonna add here 11 and then b dot append 12 all right let's go ahead and see here what happens with the b now you see there these were tuples item and these are the additional items which i just added here in these two line let's go ahead and convert back this b into a so you can simply do like this a equal to uh, we are talking about the tuple here a equal to tuple of b let's go ahead and run this and then see a all right earlier you saw earlier you saw a was like 0 0 0.1 string true 123 and 3 this was the a but now these are the two additional value got added into tuple so this is something a work around where you need to add values in the tuple but you cannot modify the tuple directly so you needed to convert it into list and then modify and then again convert back to the tuple something like we saw in the list where we added two lists together so the same things we can do with the with the tuple as well for example let's say you have a tuple already and we have here a b tuple all right so i say here top one and then something like this all right so i have here tuple a and the tuple b you can add these tuple a and b by doing a plus b now you know here we cannot modify this tuple or this tuple itself but we can perform the operation between these two tuples so as we added these two tuples together after this 12 value the value of tuple b will get added here and then you can assign this into a new variable known as a c so c will have values present into a tuple and b tuple all right you can also use the multiplication methods with the tuple as well suppose that you have a b tuple and you just multiply it by 2 and then you see what happens the tuple b will get replaced by two times of its original length all right so we had here top one one two three top one one two three at the same time if you do here a three you will see there a three time replacement will happen so this multiplication doesn't work like you are multiplying a number with the another number it's like creating a number of copies so as you do here these multiplications a three that's mean a three copies will be created for a tuple b all right this is all about in this lecture thanks a lot for watching i'll see you next one all right let's go ahead and get started with the set in a python set is also like list and the tuple but there are some differences with the set like set is unordered but the tuple and list were ordered and tuple was unchangeable uh, list was changeable that's mean tuple and set is immutable but there is a little minute difference between uh, definition of immutability while we talk about the set because set is immutable but you can remove the value and then you can add the value so in the sense of immutable you cannot modify a particular value at index but in fact you can remove a value from the set and then you can insert a new value inside the set and set is, you cannot also access set with the index like we used to do with the list and the tuple like you cannot access the index 0 1 2 3 or like that into a set 
For example, let's say if I define here set A equal to in a curly braces there apple, banana and then I say here a cherry. So the type of variable A is set and you cannot access it with the index because set does not allow this. Alright. You can find out the length of this set. All other, all other methods will work here with the set other than these modifications. But you can remove the value from the set if you want to remove this there. Like we used to remove with the list, uh, with the similar method, you can remove values from the set as well. For example, you can do like a dot remove and then I'm going to say here apple. Alright, so this apple has been removed there from the set A. Now we have only banana and cherries. You can now modify this A. A dot add. Let's say I again want to add here the apple. Alright, let's go ahead and see here A. Now you see there the apple again got added at uh, 0th location. Uh, similarly, if I do here A dot add. Uh, let's say I want to add here a value 1 and then see here this 1 goes here at the first location. Earlier if you remember in the list it used to go at the last location. Although this is not index accessible but seems like it is adding here at the first place but that is not always guarantee. This can, uh, this can add here at any place there is no guarantee. There is another feature for the set. Set does not allow a duplicate value list and the tuple allows duplicate values that's when the same value you can put there multiple times but in the set you cannot put the same value for a multiple time for example let's say if you do here a dot add the second time if you do here a dot apple now you see there the apple will be stored only one time even though if you create here a new variable from the scratch Alright, so only one time of this apple will be created out of these two items in a set there. If you have a multiple set and you can up, you, you want to update those sets together. Let's say I have here B set there. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you want to update set A and B together. Similarly, you can do like A dot update here a B. Alright, so this A will be updated with the values of the B on given condition that these will contain only unique values. If you remember A also had 1 and B also had 1 but in the final update you get here 1 only one time. That means again set does not allow a duplicate values there. There are other operations which you can perform with the set like you can keep the intersection of the values like suppose that if you want to keep only values which are matching a and b then you can perform those operations by using intersection for example let's see if i do here a dot intersection and in this i'm assigning here a new tuple there i say there one and then one three and then banana now you see here a difference there. This one is a string here. This is integer. This one is integer and there is a string. Let's go ahead and see the output. You see there the output, the intersection of A and then given this set is only 1, 3 and banana. This one is not matching there. Let's go ahead and perform the other operations like let's say if you want to keep all the values other than the common values, that means other than these values, let's go ahead and keep all other values. So you can do here like, it is symmetric difference, alright, this one is a symmetric difference, then you get here all the values other than the matching values. Earlier we had the intersection of these values, now you see there these intersection will not be coming here what we are uh, uh, getting here that's the difference between these two set 
all right other than that you can also perform here the operation like a minus b that means it will remove all the values present into a uh, sorry all the values present into b from a all right so you see there the b we had here a b one two three four and a was like this so it has removed all those one two three four it kept only apple banana and cherries similarly you can do b minus a then you see there the b is uh, what was the b b was one two three four and then it is doing b minus a and there is the a so if you remove if you remove all of these values from a b that means all of these values will get removed from the b and these values are definitely not present here in the b so b has become here an empty set there all right perfect so this is all about in this lecture thanks for watching i'll see you next one hi everyone welcome to dictionary in this lecture we are going to see how you can define a dictionary in a python and how you can access the items change the items and perform other operations with the python dictionary dictionary is also a set of uh, collections of the data this stores values in a key value pair where you define a key and against a key then you define a value a dictionary is also defined with the curly braces the difference is here it is defined with like this the key and value pair so this one is a dictionary here i'm going to just say something like this a is defined variable a is now defined as dictionary the key of dictionary is here a key and the value of dictionary a value of dictionary with the key is key there uh, the value there uh, you can also make something else which will be a little more <laughs> Uh, you know a little more logical this is a little confusing so there I have here one and then I have here two something like this something like this and then here I have here a three so now do you see there a is a variable which the type of variable is dictionary here which is dict variable all right that's the type of this variable a is dict which is dictionary all right perfect dictionaries are ordered list here dictionaries are ordered data type before python 3.7 it was not ordered it was unordered but 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 with the python 3.7 and after python 3.7 dictionary has become as a ordered data type in a python that's mean once you define order you can access these items in a similar order all right but you cannot access these ordered dictionary with the index there you can access these dictionary with the with the keys of the dictionary suppose that if you define here one all right so there you have a one it's like this here you have a one so with the help of this one you got you, you got the value of this key where it is one if you define a two you will get the value two if you define here a three you will get the value three and also one more thing dictionary also does not allow here a duplicates for example if i just copy there copy that and paste it here and if i try to define here once again something like this you will see there a key this one is stored only once so the keys of the dictionary is always unique like we used to see in a set all right you can also change the values of a key uh, values of a dictionary for a particular key suppose that you want to change a value of this key you can simply do like this a equal to one and then you can put something like this let's say if you if you want to assign a float value there so this one has become now a float value all right the value of this one key has become here a float value let's go ahead and see how you can access the keys of the dictionary so you can simply do here a dot keys you will get all the keys in the dictionary all right 
similarly you can also get the values of uh, dictionary like here a dot values you get all the list of the values now you can compare these two lists together like 1 is corresponding to 1.0 2 is 2 3 is 3 something like that let's say uh, let's say if you want to remove some values from the list then how would you remove all right so there are many methods to remove that remove that values let's say this a dictionary you want to remove this particular key you can simply do like pop and then one all right so one is removed now if you check here your dictionary a you don't have a one key there all right so the key one is not there only two items left there and if you again try to remove the key which is not inside a dictionary and if you try to remove those key you will get the error and if you if you want to avoid those type of the error you can simply provide here a default parameter which is none there all right so whenever a key is not present it will not return anything so in fact you can provide here any parameter when a key is not present it will return here a, some default value like here any value you can put here all right sorry something like this key not present all right perfect there is another way to remove uh, last added item will be removed from the dictionary if you type there a dot pop item all right so it will remove the last added item since nowadays dictionary is ordered data type so it will remove the data which is present at the last index in the dictionary so that is removed now you check their dictionary a now it has become their only one item you can also update your dictionary something like this a dot update then you can add here a new key all right something like this a new value now if you check your a you will see there and this key is added into your dictionary there all right you can also copy your dictionary as well if you do like here b, b equal to a dot copy so this a is copied into b variable and the length of b variable is 2 there all right now you see there a and b equal are equal and if you check there a equal to b you will get there it is a true because these two dictionaries are equal you can also create there a nested dictionary something like let's say if you want to create here a dictionary a dot update inside that i want to put here a dictionary b now you check there now you check there this was the original dictionary and there this was the dictionary b i added this dictionary inside the dictionary this is known as the nested dictionary all right so this is all about in this lecture thanks a lot for watching this i'll see you next one hi everyone let's go ahead and get started with the conditional statements in conditional statements we are gonna first see if and else previously while we were in our boolean lecture we had seen how you can compare two variable there were two type of the boolean value either true or false the true means logical one and false means that is the zero so you can you you can compare two variables like a equal to equal to b or a variable is not equal to the another variable or a variable is less than the b variable or you can say a variable is less than or equal to the b variable and similarly the a variable is greater than b and a greater than or equal to b so by using all these you can uh, compare these two variable values you will be getting output either one or zero that means either true or false for example let's see i say here a equal to equal to 100 b equal to 101 and now if i say a greater than b then we will be getting a false result because a is not greater than b 
that's where we are going to apply here if and else so i say here if a is greater than b then say there print a is larger else print b is larger so what is happening here if a greater than b is true then this statement will be executed otherwise this statement will be executed let's go ahead and run this and then see what happens so since this one is false so this will not execute and automatically else statement will execute so whatever the inside this else statement that will get executed there suppose that you want to provide here a new variable c equal to a plus b and then you want to print here the value of c is do you remember we had seen how you can do a formatting of a string by putting two curly braces there and then put there a format the value uh, the variable which we want to insert here that is the c let's go ahead and run this this says that the value of c is 201 and where c equal to a plus b all right it is something like this all right perfect similarly suppose that if you have a three variable let's say a equal to 100 and b equal to 150 and then c equal to a plus b and based on these three variables let's say if you want to apply their f else statement multiple times so i say here like if a is less than 10 then I say there a print a is very small number and then I say there else print a is large number all right so a is not less than 10 then this will be executed but my question is if you want to put here a multiple if else together then how do you do that one way to do that you can put there a multiple if statement something like that other way to do that is if uh, that that is the else if so l if all right so it says that if a is less than 10 then execute this line otherwise check this condition here so i say here a is a is less than 50 then i say here a print a is medium number thereafter if a is greater than or equal to 50 then i say there a is large number so do you see there still we are getting here a is large number but suppose that if I say there a equal to 10, then it says that a is medium number because this does not execute because a is 10. So the 10 is not less than 10 since this is false, but this becomes a true. All right. But you see there, there is, there is a contradiction between these. Uh, it's not wrong, but it could be a little confusing because a is less than 10 and a is less than 50. So whenever a is less than 50, all right, or you can say whenever a is less than 10, then obviously a will be always less than 50. So to, to make it a little more clear, what we can do, we can just copy this and paste it here once again. Uh, uh, I think we didn't use these two variables. So let's go ahead and delete those two variables. Those two variables are not needed. So I say if a is less than 10 then i say here if a is less than 50 and i want to test here if a is greater than or equal to 10 at the same time 
all right so although this 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 above line of these code are not wrong but this could be a little confusing so just to make sure that a is less than 50 but it is greater than or equal to 10 so you can check it like this if you if you run this here you will get the true result because a is 10 so which is greater than or equal to 10 this one is also true and there this one is also true the end of two true values is always true the end of true and false is a false and false and false is a false itself for example you can say here something like this true and the true will be always true but as soon as you make any one of these two variable as a false so the end of those two variable will be false similarly you can if you want to check a multiple conditions together all right for example let's say if i say there a equal to 10 and b equal to 20 and here i say if a equal to equal to 10 all right put it into a parenthesis there and then i check here and b equal to equal to 20 then i say there print found both numbers all right obviously these two are equal there but suppose that if you want to test it something uh, else there like if you want to provide there or so you can say there or then it says that if this one is true or this one so either one of these true then these sentence uh, these line of you know the code will be executed all right so in the coming lectures we will be seeing more about the apls and the conditional statements so the keep learning i'll see you in next lecture hi everyone let's go ahead and get started with the while loops there are two type of the loops in a python for loop and while loop this while loop works similar to for loop but there is a little uh, change in uh, while loop let's go ahead and see how you can execute a while loop for example let's say you have a number a equal to 10 then you need to keep checking the condition on uh, some variable so currently i'm going to check on a variable itself i say here while a is less than uh, you can say while a is greater than zero so what I'm going to do here, A is already defined as the 10 and inside this while loop, I'm going to print the value of A and then I'm going to decrease the value of A by 1. So it will keep decreasing till it reaches their 0. So as soon as A becomes 0, so the 0 cannot be greater than 0. So this will be a false and then automatically your code will exit this while loop. Let's go ahead and run this. Once you run this, you see there A is printed there 10 times and thereafter it automatically exited this loop. You can check it like 5. So as soon as A reaches 5 here, for example, currently A is 6. All right. So the print A print a that the 6 is printed and then a equal to 6 minus 1 that becomes 5 then it checks there 5 is greater than 5 no 5 is not greater than 5 you see there a is 5 there all right and if you execute this statement here you will get here a false so as soon as the evaluation of this expression becomes false this while loop will automatically exit all right this is the natural way to exit a while loop but there are other ways where you can use to exit a while loop without being this expression as a false for example let's say you say there while 
you can say while true all right that's mean while always all right so this is going to run for an infinite number of times but at the same time here i say there if a is less than 5 then you do a break all right so inside a while loop you can also use your break statement if you don't want to check your condition here you can simply use your break statement inside here so as soon as a becomes less than 5 it automatically it will break this while loop that's when your code will exit while loop let's go ahead and run this now you see there a is 10 so the 10 is printed then it becomes 9 then it becomes 8 7 6 and 5 as soon as a becomes 5 where it is printed all right so a 5 is printed and then a equal to 5 minus 1 a becomes 4 so this expression becomes true there so as soon as this becomes true this while loop automatically you know uh, uh, stops after executing this break statement from there all right there are uh, there is another uh, there is another statement which is a continuous statement suppose that if you want to if you, if you don't want to print a particular number or you can say if you don't want to execute uh, some you know if you don't want to execute sometimes your code when a particular condition is met then you can also use their continue for example at the same you know we can utilize the same code which we used earlier let's go ahead and copy that and paste it here what i say here if a equal to equal to 10 all right or you can say a 9 then just continue all right so what happens here if a is equal to equal to 9 it will it will automatically go back again at the while and it seems like it will you know it, it will stuck here the reason is a will this this program will never come once it reaches at the 9 so i need to bring this value here so that it can decrease it by one value all right then I say if a equal to equal to 9 then continue otherwise print a let's go ahead and see so now you see there a is 10 so the 10 minus 1 that's the a equal to 9 so this one is the true that's mean a is 9 it will not print a all right because there is a continuous statement so this continuous statement says that go back here and then again execute this so it, it is executing from 8 7 6 5 the similarly you can say if a is greater than 0 and you don't want to print you don't want to print there the numbers div divided by 2 that's mean the even numbers so there you can say here 2 equal to equal to 0 so a modulus of 2 whenever the remainder is 0 then don't print let's go ahead and run this now you see there only odd numbers are being printed here at the same time if you want to print only even numbers you can simply use their a modulus 2 equal to equal to 1 that's mean whenever there is odd number it will not execute this statement in fact it will go back to while loop and then it will again evaluate this expression when it becomes as an even number and then only it prints a value all right Perfect. So this is all about in this lecture. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next one. Hi everyone. Let's go ahead and get started with the for loops in a Python. For loop is used for iterating over a sequence in a Python. The sequence which is already defined with the tuple set or the dictionary or a custom kind of uh, uh, list like range. You can iterate those values using a for loop. This for loop is similar to like any other programming languages you might have seen in C and C++. Uh, the overall working principle is same here in the Python as well. For example, let's say you have a data variable A equal to 
where you have a banana and then you have here apples and then you have here you know the cherry suppose that you want to print these values from uh, this variable then how do you do that you can simply write here a for loop for x in a that means it will iterate over this list one by one each of these items will be placed here in x variable at one iteration and thereafter you can write your statement inside this if you want to do if you want to do any pre-processing or print or whatever you want to do then you can uh, put your uh, code there let's go ahead print x there so if i print x there it's gonna just print here banana apples and cherries all right perfect let's go ahead and see if you want to do some modification in your code i mean to say that inside this for loop how do you do that Previously, we had seen few methods to modify your string. That's what I'm going to do here. Let's say if you want to make this this string, this string into the uppercase, you can simply do something like this. Now it has become there in uppercase. Similarly, you can do in the title case. All right. Or any other statement, whatever the statement you want to write here, you can just write those statements there. All right. Inside this. All right. So while we were uh, in while loops lecture, we had seen uh, two special type of statement break and continue to break down the loop. Let's go ahead and see how you can apply break and continue in your for loop. For example, if you don't want to print apples, then what you can do there? You can simply check here if x equal to equal to apples. All right, we had earlier there, it's apples. So if x equal to equal to apples, then you can here uh, continue there. All right, that means the time it will start iterating this loop. Let's go ahead and define this loop here so that you can refer it here itself. So it will start iterating. The first it will iterate there banana. Since x is not equal to bananas, uh, since this banana is not equal to apples so this statement will not execute it will print banana and when it comes to the apples so x will become apples apples equal to the apples so it will execute this statement this statement says that it will not execute anything after this it will go back to here all right that means this apple will not be printed and then the cherry comes there let's go ahead and run this now you see there this banana and cherry you can here some do something like that inside continue loop all right let's go ahead and run this now do you see there this is now inside the continue loop as soon as this execute this statement it automatically goes here it doesn't execute anything which comes after this continuous statement similarly you can also apply for a break statement suppose that if you don't want to print anything after after a particular value suppose that once apples is printed all right and then you don't want to print anything i mean to say that you just want to get out of the for loop then how do you do that let's go ahead and delete this whole thing so if you do something like that the banana apples and the cherry these got printed but i don't want to i don't want to be printed anything after these apples so what i do here as soon as I reach to the apples, then I'm just going to break my for loop. All right. So I say here, if x equal to equal to apples, let's go ahead and just break this. So as soon as I, uh, as soon as this code runs this statement, it will automatically break this for loop. So the for loop will no longer run unlike this continuous statement. So the continue statement was something where only a single step was being skipped but in a break it actually break this whole loop from the you know uh, uh, from the its root i mean to say that it 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 break down the for loop the, or while loop that doesn't run any further similarly if you have a many values to check then you can also use their a list to check for example let's go ahead and copy that here 
and let's say I have here few more values something like this and I don't want to print when you are the apples and one when your x is apples and one then I don't want to print anything so what I can do there I can uh, you know I can use here a continuous statement so it's like here if x in all right now you see there the difference earlier I was checking x equal to equal to something but now I'm going to check here x in a list so the list which I'm going to define there apples and one so when your x is x is apples or one then I'm just going to do here a continue that's mean I don't want to print anything all right let's go ahead and see this one now you see banana cherry and two got printed but this apples and one just these got skipped there and similar method you can also use to break your statement using if check with the list there all right let's go ahead and see if you want to run your for loop for many number of times suppose that you have a list which is a and the length of this list is len a equal to len of a all right so the len of list a is 5 there and you want to run your for loop five times or let's say the 500 times then how would you do that the best way to do that using a range method in a python like if you do their range and give some numbers then it will it, it will give you a list there range 5 that's mean it will give you a range from 0 to 5 so you can iterate this range from uh, range with a for loop something like this for x in range 5 and then you can print here you can print here x so you see there the 0 1 2 3 and 4 got printed this is one way to do that and if you want to iterate this list here which we had seen earlier the one way of the iteration of that list is this but if you want to get the other methods to iteration of that list you can simply do something like this range len of a that's mean it's gonna iterate total number of length of the array a and then you see it's total 5 length of that array 0 1 2 3 4 5 similarly you can print here that array with the index x there something like that so at the 0th index banana is there at 1 it's apples at 4th it's a 2 there perfect so this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this i'll see you next one hi everyone let's go ahead and get started with the function in a python function is a block of code which runs only once and if you want to run it multiple times then you need to just call a function by its name then you can pass a parameter in a function and whatever the desired value either it can print those values inside a function itself or you can return those values from a function so the definition of the function is something like this you can write here define and then your function then you can also pass here the parameters then you need to put here a colon and then hit the enter there is additional tab there and then you can perform your statement you can write there write your statements all right perfect let's go ahead and print these parameters as well here let's go ahead and run this I say here your function and inside that I pass a parameter the name is here I'm just gonna say there your parameter let's go ahead and run this and then see what happens there so this function runs only once write your statements and then the parameter whatever the parameter I pass those will be printed there even though I can pass any parameters there that will be printed there all right any parameters you can pass the numbers here dictionary here whatever you want to you know the pass here you can pass this you can pass the list here all right any parameters you can pass in a function you can pass here a dictionary as well all right so that's the advantage of having a function so function you need to define only once and then you can call this function as many as times you want 
only you need to pass their uh, desired parameters and then you can pre-process or post-process your values whatever you get from the function let's go ahead and try to write a proper function where we want to add two numbers all right so i do here define add two numbers there i pass here a and b so this parameter i'm passing then based on these parameter values i'm gonna see i'm gonna write here c equal to a plus b and then i say there print a equal to i'm just gonna use here a string format method and b equal to dot format where i'm just gonna pass here a and b so it says that a equal to this b equal to this then what will be the c equal to all right so here i'm gonna just say there c equal to a plus b all right where again it says that the value of the c which we got here all right so string formatting we had already seen in our string lecture if you want to insert any values you can use these curly braces to insert your string or insert any values inside a string itself that is known as a string format all right let's go ahead and run this thereafter i'm just gonna call this function by writing its name add two number then i say here 10 and 12 let's go ahead and run this it says that a is 10 b is 12 then we are doing c equal to a plus b the result of a plus b is 22 that's how you can do this but suppose that if you don't know how many parameters are passed there suppose that you want to add all the numbers whatever the parameters are passed there then how would you do that the method of doing that you need to put there one asterisk there all right let me uh, tell show you that add to add numbers let's go ahead and define your function add numbers then i say there params inside this params i'm just going to put here one single star there so single star says that the number of parameters are not known in advance but in fact it will it will take any number of parameters you pass if it is a single star then you can access the parameter by their index suppose that if you just print these params then see what happens here all right add numbers there i say one two and three let's go ahead and run this do you see there this params has got like one two three all right so whatever the number i passed there this param is something like that so this has become now a tuple if there is just a single asterisk there then that becomes a tuple all right so you can say there sum of sum of these all right so you need to put here a curly braces and then you can do here uh, format all right so the sum of these equal to then again i'm just gonna put here you know the curly braces then i'm just gonna do here a format there i'm just gonna do a sum of all the value what you represent inside this param something like that so the sum of these values is six there all right oh, perfect let's go ahead and see if if you if you don't want these values in the form of these tuples you can get these values in the form of list as well uh, sorry in the form of dictionary as well suppose that but you need to put their uh, double star there then you put their params all right let's go ahead and run this and then see what happens it says that add numbers takes zero positional argument but three were given so what happens here since we have applied here a double star so this doesn't work like this you need to provide here a parameter name so i say a equal to one and then b equal to two and then c equal to three so this will work there now you see 
this parameter got converted into a dictionary and this dictionary is being printed here uh, by this statement. Now the values of this dictionary you can add. So there are many methods. Either you can use a for loop or you can simply do something like this sum of params dot values. So it will automatically get all these values and then it will perform the summation of these values. You just run this and then you will see they are the six value. The another method to do that you can iterate over this dictionary using a for loop something like this. Let's say you have a sum equal to zero then for x in params. All right. So I'm just going to iterate over a dictionary uh, with a for loop. Then it will then it will iterate over each of these key there. All right. So this x is the key to get the value. I need to get the params and then with the key. All right. So I say there sum is equal to sum plus params and then the key value there something like that. And then finally I do here print sum is something like this. Let's go ahead and run this then see what happens. It says that there is the error. So this sum referenced before the assignment. All right. So seems like this is not signed it. All right. So here it is wrong. Uh, I need to uh, uh, give it something, give its name to something else. Let's say a c c equal to zero. Then I see there c c and c something like this. Let's go ahead and run this. All right. So it says that here. <coughs> Sorry. Now it says that here a sum is 6. So 1 plus 2 is the 3 and 3 plus 3 is a 6 there. So these are the methods to sum these values and we have also seen a method how you can iterate over a dictionary using a for loop. Let's go ahead and see if you want to return a value from the uh, parameter uh, from the definition of the function then how would you do that. You can simply write here return all right so return c that is the value of sum then it will return these numbers instead of print in, instead of just printing here it will also return these numbers here just go ahead and run this now you see there in the output you are getting a 6 because this function is returning these value if you assign there c equal to something like that and then you can access that variable c is here the value of c is 6 there in fact, you can also return here any type of the data there, any data types. Let's go ahead and try to return this in the form of the dictionary that you can do something like this. Sum of, sum of params. All right, this is the dictionary. I'm just going to see there. Let's go ahead and run this. So this return is stored here in the C. I need to run this. This says that this whole dictionary just got returned there. This, this. The, the value of C got replaced whatever the sum was there that is the 6 there. So that's how you can also return a value from a function as well. All right. This is all about in this lecture. Thanks a lot for watching this. I'll see you next one. Hi everyone. Let's go ahead and get started with the working with date and time in a Python. There are two module available in a Python date time and time. Let's go ahead and import those module. So you need to write here import date time and then import time. So we will be using these two module to work with the date and time separately. Let's suppose that your first task to get the current date and time. How do you do that? You can simply do like date time dot date time dot now. So what happens there is another module inside this date time and in which we are calling their now method. All right. So that now method is going to produce you a result like today is 16th October 2022 and current time at my local is 18 hours 11 minute and 53 second. This one is the this, this one is the microseconds there. All right, but suppose that if you don't want to get the time, then you can simply do like date time dot date time dot today. So it will give you just 
date there all right okay so one thing we missed there actually this will give you a date here if you put there a date uh, similarly it should give you time as well if i put there time okay the time is not available seems like so the time won't be there all right maybe with the now okay so the now is also not working so it may be a little confusing to you and if you want to know what are other methods available inside this date time directory you can simply do like dir inside this date time all right so this is gonna print all the available method and directory inside the date time so it has there a date time itself a system time uh, time delta the time zone and then time zone information all right perfect so this one is giving you a date time object uh, suppose that you have a task now where you want to create your date time so how would you create these date time object earlier we have seen that you can create a string object something like this you can create a list object by keeping you know the comma separated value inside the uh, square bracket inside parenthesis you can create the tuple but my question is how would you generate a date time object so to generate a date time object like this a date object you can simply do date time dot date and then inside that you need to put first year month and then day if you don't know what are the parameters it takes you need to simply press their shift and the tab it will automatically give you these suggestions all right so in this suggestion you see doc string says that year month and the day you need to give let's say the today's year is 2022 and then month is 10 and the date is 16 let's go ahead and run this it says that here it takes integer integer values there these parameters should be integers i had given these parameter as a string so you need to keep also uh, these values as integer only now you see there a date time object is created separately like we had earlier from there all right perfect let's go ahead and see how you can get the today's date by importing additional you know additional directories like this date you have there a date and you have a time as well let's go ahead and import those so you can simply do like this from date time import date time all right it's one way to do that another one is from date time import date time and date and then you can do import date time date and time as well now you don't need to do their date time dot date time you need to just simply do here like date time dot today you will get here all right so all the information about the today uh, similarly you can do for the date as well so the date dot today so you will get here a today's date similarly you can do with the time as well so the time dot you need to press their tab so it will give you all these uh, it will it will give you you know uh, these suggestions which you can use there so today you can get the hours you can get the minute and then you can get the seconds as well suppose that i want to get the today time dot r maybe it's like this okay so the time dot hours is not available seems like okay all right anyway so that's not callable no issues we are just gonna ignore this one I was just predicting that this could be uh, callable. Let's go ahead and see how we can use date time with the time delta. That's mean if you need to find out the difference between the two date, then how would you do that? Okay. So, but before that, let's go ahead and add a few cells here. All right. Let's go ahead and import our uh, uh, the time delta. So you need to do here from date time import date time and date let's go ahead and create here a two date there so i'm just gonna create here date one equal to date which i had earlier 2022 and then 10th of this month and let's say the day i'm gonna put here a one and then i'm gonna just put here a date two so the date two is like 2023 
and then I'm gonna just randomly select here January month and 10th of January so I have these two date if you do here date 2 minus date 1 you will be getting their time delta so this says that there are 101 days difference between these two dates that means if you are given with the two date and you want to get the difference between difference between uh, you know the dates you can get those like this okay uh, let's say I say here you know the T delta equal to this and T delta is of course 101 date you can get this till T delta into number of days as well okay it says that number of days is 101 and similarly T delta dot you can get here the total seconds total number of seconds there all right the total number of seconds between these is these all right so you can apply these time delta methods to get days and seconds similarly you can get many more like uh, you can get their uh, seconds microseconds you can also get the minutes as well there the total number of minutes there okay uh, seems like minutes are not available so we can ignore this one the minute one all right perfect all right finally now let's go ahead and see if you are given with a string and then you need to convert that string value into a date time object then how would you do that let's say you have here a date string equal to today's date 2022 and this is october 10 all right it's something like this all right you have something okay this is a bad uh, you know the bad formatting so i'm gonna say here a uh, 10 october 2022 so you are given with the date string something like this now i ask you to get get the date time object something like this then how do you do that okay so it's very much simple you need to use their uh, strp time method there so that's the strip time method there that you need to import from date time or you can directly use that so you can do like this date time dot strp time okay you know you, you, you need to reformat these time so i'm just gonna put their date string this this date string i want to do formatting on this date string and the type of the formatting which i'm gonna use there the type of formatting is there a day so there i say here a percent d and then it has here october which is the first three letters of the month name which you can which is actually defined with the capital b so these are the you know the terms to define a date there okay these are the standard terms you can you can search here uh, you know the date formatting you know uh, date formatting uh, formats you can get those images there right uh, maybe let me show you we should be getting those somewhere it's not here I think it was earlier perhaps here something like this yeah so there you see the B is long month name and and this one is the short month name okay so I need to put here a small B letter and then there is the comma thereafter we need to put their year so the full year name is defined with percent capital Y let's go ahead and run this and then see what happens do you see there it says that here it, it, it converted our uh, you know this date string into a date time object there all right so this date time object has become there 2022 that's the year month and then the October a 10th of October there is the day and we don't have any uh, any anything else like uh, li like hours and the minutes that's why these are the zero there all right Perfect. So this is all about in this lesson. Thanks a lot for watching this. I'll see you in next one. 
Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with file handling in a Python. In this lecture, we will be seeing how you can open a file, how you can read it, how you can write it in a various mode. Python supports read mode, append mode, write mode and create mode. I throw the error if file already exists. Other than these two mode, there are other than these four mode, there are two more modes. Those are T mode that means create a text mode and another mode is the binary mode that means create their binary mode. Alright, so you can put this B with the W that's been the binary mode write, binary mode read and binary mode append. Similarly, the text mode read, text mode write and the text mode append. Let's go ahead and see how you can read a file. It's very much simple. You need to read a file object by calling here open and then you need to provide here a file path. You can simply click on shift and the tab to see the details of this method which is known as doc string. Then you can click on this one. You will see there uh, details of this string will uh, detail of this method will be printed there which is known as a doc string. All right. So the doc string says that it takes the first parameter as the file. The second parameter is the default parameter, which is read mode. And then other parameters are also a default parameter like buffering and encoding errors, new line, all those things. All right. So we don't need to worry about the other default parameters. We are just gonna, you know, take the first and the second parameters. Here it is also uh, uh, showing us that what are the modes this open supports. Like it has also here U mode which is universal new line mode and currently it is deprecated. Alright. Perfect. Let's go ahead and see if you can read any file. Alright. So to make sure that you read a file you need to first create here a folder. So I'm just going to create here a folder. The name of the folder I'm going to rename as the data. All right. So I'm just going to rename this as the data. Inside this data, I'm going to create here a new text file. And the name of file, I'm just going to keep here file.txt. All right. That's the new file name. This is sample file. All right. We we created a new file manually and this file is stored here file.txt. Let's go ahead and see if you can read that file.txt. So I do here file.txt. It says that there is the error. No such file or directory found. The reason is we put this file inside the data and currently our notebook is inside the root directory. So if we don't assign here any, you know, the directory name, that means this file, this, 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 this method open is looking for this file into a root directory. So, but we don't have this file into root directory. We have that file inside the data folder. So you need to go, you need to write there a data. So it takes the current directory. There is the data folder and then inside the data folder, the file is file.txt. Now, if you run this, you will see there it's completely fine. There is the no error. Let's go ahead and see how you can read this, re read the content of the file. So you can simply do like f dot read. All right. So you do there f dot read. It reads the content of the file. Currently, we have only one line of the content there. But suppose that if you have a multiple line there, this is second line. This is third. Let's suppose that you have a multi-line data and then if you try to read your, if you try to read your, you know, the file name, you see there a new line character is also coming in your txt file. So how would you remove these new lines and you get the correct data? So there are other methods. You can simply do like f dot read and then you can do either read line or read lines. If you do their read line, you will see there it will read a first line. All right. So since this the file pointer is already at the end of the line. So if we do after reading this, you will get the, you know, nothing will be printed there. So you need to bring your file pointer at the start by 
reopening file once again and then you read so the first time if you read you will get the first line all right and if you read it second time you will get the second line if you read the third time you will get the third line and at the fourth time you will get the empty data that's the read line that means it will read a single line at a time so what would be the method to read everything in one go so the method is something like this you can do like f dot read lines all right so it will read this whole lines together but again there is a problem every line is having there a new line character so how would you remove that either you can perform here a list operation to remove this new line or i'll show you another method but suppose that you have a data here something like this this is your data and you want to remove these lines so now we are going to use here a list comprehension method all right i have not shown you uh, till now how you do the list comprehension that i'm going to show you here with the help of for loop so i say here for x in data now each of these will be you know coming into x one by one and uh, this for loop will be iterating over this data then i'm just going to put here x dot strip if you remember i have already taught you how this strip work so this strip is going to remove all non printable characters all right if you run this it will throw the error now what you need to do you need to put there a two square bracket here and there so this method is known as a list comprehension method so in a single line of code we have applied a for loop we did some pre processing and then again we recreated a new list after pre processing let's go ahead and run this now if you run this you will be getting here you know uh, without any special characters or new characters a new line character now you can assign this as a data let's go ahead and cut this from there and paste it here and then if you see the data you are getting here a correct data that's the one way let's go ahead and see the other way to do that that's the simplest one you can simply do here like read and you now you see the data this data contains here all the new lines all right so one way to do that you can split your data with the new line all right you see there now this one and this one is exactly the same otherwise what you can do you can do data dot there is split line method is there all right so there is method split lines so this method automatically split your data on a new line if you run this again if you run this you will be getting the same data what we had earlier all right so once you have read your file then you can close your file by f dot close by writing f dot close so you will see there now your f is closed there all right this one is closed now you cannot read anything from here all right because it says that this input output operation on uh, a closed file this file is already closed all right so we have been reading a file which was already created manually let's go ahead and see how you can create your file all right so you can simply open a new file with the desired mode i'm going to say here f is equal to open you need to give a path where you want to open your file i want to open my file inside the data and i'm going to just give here a new name as a write file dot txt and the mode which i'm going to open i'm going to open it into a write mode now your file is open into a write mode once that is done then you can simply do here f dot write and then you can write your content here so i am i'm going to say here this is line 1 let's go ahead and run this once you run this this says that the total 14 number of characters has been written there and if you count this you will find that it is a 14 character there let's go ahead and see if you have a file we have a file but it says that the file file size is a zero byte only and if you open this you don't see anything written there the reason is we have not closed this file yet so if we use this method we need to close our file so that the data 
written into buffer can be written into file itself. So you can simply do here f dot close and now if you see if you reopen your file from here you see a 14 byte size file size is there and this is line 1 is written there. Similarly you can write there a multi line something like this. This is line 2 and if you run this now you will see there close this and reopen again it here. You see there this is line 1 but the line 2 is not printed no, not written in a new line. The reason is here if you write something in your file object it will just your a file pointer sits there. So when it is sitting there and you write a new data it will start writing from here. So every time if you want to write the data into a new line you need to put there a new line character there either here or you can write here f dot write a new line there. Alright let's go ahead and run this and if you see this now you should be able to get these the, these lines broken into two different lines there. Alright so the right now you see there I have tried to write the files multiple times but every time only two lines are being written there. The reason is whenever you use a file mode w to open a file it will overwrite a file if it exists otherwise it will create a file. But suppose that if you want to add the data into a file which is already present then you need to open your file into append mode. Now you see there you have a two line of code there only two lines there. Now if I run this this opens file into append mode that's when those two lines will be there and two more new lines will be added there in the file. Now if you open this you see there these two lines are added but again there a new line is not added there. So the best way to do that what you can do you can write here a new line as well. So the f dot write a new line there. Alright let's go ahead and run it multiple times three four times I ran that file and let's go ahead and see this. Now you see there this file is coming there just to make sure that it is working perfectly fine I'm just gonna delete this file from here and thereafter I'm gonna run that once again. Okay let's go ahead and run this. Now you see that the file is not present there. So the append mode if you open your file into append mode and file does not present in your system it will create a file and then it will start writing these data. Let's go ahead and run this two times three times. I ran it three times. Now you see the file is there and let's go ahead and see there are total six lines are there because I ran it six, uh, three times and every time the two lines was created there. Perfect. So this is all about in this lecture. Thanks a lot for watching this. I'll see you in next one.